Let's do a full analysis, including first derivative and second derivative analysis, of h of x equals x squared minus 15 e to the negative x. Let's start off by finding our critical points. The critical points are where h prime is equal to zero or does not exist. Now to find h prime, we have to use product rule, because we have one function times another. The derivative of our first function is 2x times the second is e to the negative x plus the first which is x squared minus 15 times the derivative of the second. Now for the second we have to use chain rule. The derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x because the derivative of our stuff is negative 1. We can pull this negative out and move it in front of this entire thing right here. So here we have h prime of x is equal to 2x e to the negative x minus x squared minus 15 e to the negative x. Now we want to set this equal to zero. One of the easier ways to do this would be to factor out an e to the negative x. When you factor out e to the negative x, we're left with 2x minus this whole thing. The negative has to be distributed to both the x squared and to the negative 15. So here we have negative x squared plus 15. And this is all equal to zero. Well, it would be a lot easier if we could actually have x squared be positive in here. So let's factor out a negative. So this is negative e to the negative x times x squared minus 2x minus 15. Of course, this is still h prime of x. Now, e to the stuff is never going to equal 0, ever. It's always going to be positive, except for when x approaches infinity, because e to the negative infinity approaches 0. Of course, that's not really an issue here. So let's continue. We can factor this down. Here we have negative e to the negative x times x minus 5, x plus 3. And this is all equal to 0. So here we have critical points at x equals negative 3 and at x equals 5. We can now do our first derivative analysis to determine where h is increasing, decreasing, and also the local extrema. So here's the graph of h prime, here's negative 3, and here's positive 5. Let's look to the left of negative 3. Let's say negative 5. Negative e to the fifth is going to be negative. Negative 5 minus 5 is negative, and negative 5 plus 3 is negative. So here we have a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. Let's check between negative 3 and 5. Let's say 0. e to the 0 is 1 times negative 1 is negative. 0 minus 5 is negative. 0 plus 3 is positive. Negative times a negative times a positive is a positive. And let's look to the right of 5. How about 6? Negative on the outside, positive here, and positive here. So that's negative right there. So we have a relative min at x equals negative 3, as well as a relative max at x equals 5. Furthermore, we can write out that h increases on the interval from negative 3 to 5, because h prime is positive. And furthermore, h decreases on the interval from negative infinity to negative 3 and from 5 to infinity. And here's our first derivative analysis. Now let's take a look at our second derivative analysis. To begin our second derivative analysis, we first need to find the second derivative. To do that, we have to use product rule. We'll use negative e to the negative x as our first function and this polynomial as our second function. So the derivative of negative e to the negative x by chain rule is positive e to the negative x. Since the negative 1 
in the chain comes down in front. And this is times our second function plus the first, which is negative e to the negative x, times the derivative of the second, which is 2x minus 2. And we'll set this equal to 0 since this is not going to be uh, undefined anywhere. We can factor out the e to the negative x again. We get x squared minus 2x minus 15. This negative right here gets distributed to both the 2x and the negative 2. So here we have minus 2x plus 2, and this is all equal to 0. Continuing, we have e to the negative x. Here we have x squared. Negative 2x minus 2x is negative 4x, and negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. And of course, this is all equal to 0. Now, e to the negative x is never equal to 0. However, this polynomial might be. We can't factor it, so let's use the quadratic formula. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c is positive 52 all over 2a. 16 plus 52 is 68, so here we have 4 plus or minus the square root of 68 over 2. 68 can be factored into 4 times 7, 17. So here's 4 plus or minus, we can take the 4 out, that's 2 root 17 all over 2. And finally, this is equal to 2 plus or minus root 17. Now we don't know for sure whether these are our inflection points. However, we can determine this using our second derivative analysis. So let's call this h double prime. We'll call this one 2 minus root 17. And we'll call this one 2 plus root 17. Now root 17 is a bit more than 4. So 2 minus approximately 4 is approximately negative 2. And 2 plus root 17, that's approximately 6. So we can keep this in mind as we find numbers to the left, middle, and right. To the left of about negative 2, let's try negative 5. If we were to plug negative 5 into here, we'd have a positive on the outside. Negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20 minus 13. That's going to be positive. So here we have a positive over here. Let's check 0. e to the 0 is 1. 0 minus 0 minus 13, that's going to be negative. And of course, if we look to the right of 2 plus root 17, we can try 10. It's going to be positive. Which means that we have an inflection point at 2 minus root 17. and at 2 plus root 17. So at x equals 2 plus or minus root 17. Furthermore, we know that h is concave up on the interval from negative infinity to 2 minus root 17 and from 2 plus root 17 off to positive infinity. And h is concave down on the interval from 2 minus root 17 to 2 plus root 17 because that's where our second derivative is negative. And of course h is concave up because the second derivative is positive. Now I've actually graphed this equation h in wolframalpha.com. Let's take a look at how our investigation of the analysis reflects in this graph. Now if you look at h prime, h prime tells us that h is decreasing to the left of negative 3. Well, let's see where h is decreasing. Here we have from negative infinity down to right here which is negative 3. So that's correct. Then from negative 3 to 5 our h is increasing. So 5 is right here and it looks like 
H is actually increasing up until that point. And then it looks like at 5, H starts decreasing again because if you take the limit as X approaches infinity, E to the negative infinity, that approaches 0. So this goes just above the X axis and then it comes back down again and it uh, approaches the X axis as X goes to off to infinity. But there is actually a max right here since we're increasing and then it starts going back down again. If you take a look more at this, uh, we have a relative min at x equals negative 3, and in fact that's actually a global min, and a relative max at x equals 5. Now, let's take a look at our second derivative analysis. 2 minus root 17 is approximately negative 2-ish. So if we actually were to graph about negative 2, that would be approximately right here, which is a little bit less than negative 2. And if you look closely, h is concave up to the left of negative 2. And in our analysis, this is reflected because h double prime is positive to the left of 2 minus root 17. And then from 2 minus root 17 to 2 plus root 17, which is about negative 2 to about positive 6, h double prime is negative, which means that h is concave down. So from about here until around here-ish, this function is concave down. And then it actually, you can't quite see it because it has to zoom in very, very far, but it actually becomes a bit concave up again as it goes down towards uh, the x-axis. So all of this is perfectly reflected. And furthermore, uh, 2 minus root 17 and 2 plus root 17 those are both inflection points because the concavity of H is changing at those two points. And there you have it.